Hey, this is uh, Charles Blatchard, pastor of Bucksmont Baptist Church. This Sunday, what we're doing is we're doing a special service. Uh, we're doing a, a service uh, that combines the Psalms and prayer. And we're doing this because there's a lot of anxiousness. There's a lot of anxiety and tension and different things going on in the world right now. People are at odds with one another. It's been a really difficult year. In the beginning of this year, in January, uh, we had our first confirmed case of COVID in the United States. Um, just from, from January uh, to March, uh, COVID uh, began to spread in the Philadelphia area. We're located in the Philadelphia region and began to spread so much that virtually everything shut down in the state of Pennsylvania from March all the way up through July. And some things, unfortunately, are never going to open again. Uh, businesses, uh, some of them have been so greatly impacted that they're no longer going to open. Uh, nonprofits, it's the same thing. Many nonprofits have been impacted and churches as well. So it's just been a really crazy year. Uh, so many different things that happened in this year have compounded uh, anxiety and fear. And uh, we also have, uh, you know, the, uh, we have protests and riots because of, of people being uh, killed by police as well. And so uh, it's just been a, a year, I think one of the words of the year many people say is unprecedented. Uh, there's just unprecedented fear, there's unprecedented anxiety, there's unprecedented depression. And, you know, by all measures, uh, many people have never seen anything like this before in their lifetime. It just seems like we're going through one thing after the other. Then uh, on Tuesday, we have our presidential elections and, and our elections, um, election day. And so there's also a lot of fear and anxiety and division related to that. So what I wanted to do this morning is just uh, take some time and reflect on who God is and, and what he's done. And so we're going to do this or we're gonna, um, at Bucksmont for Sunday service through the reading of Psalms. Uh, I chose a, a couple Psalms as well uh, just to kind of uh, remind us who God is and how he's on the throne because God does not want his church to be divided. Right now, there's so many people, um, even uh, us who identify as Christians, who can agree on the vast majority of things, but then just disagree on one, per, one or two percent of issues. And just those disagreement of issues, one or two percent things are ca causing a lot of division within the church. There's some people who are even saying uh, that, that others who disagree with them are no longer, are, aren't Christians. They're questioning their faith. Or others that don't do the things they do or vote for the person they're voting for isn't a Christian and isn't being obedient to God. So there's just so much division and, and so much uh, action as if God is not in control, as if God is not uh, steering the ship. And that, uh, that that's causing anxiety. And um, as a church, uh, the global church, uh, as all Christians, we can't witness to people. We can't be the people God wants us to be if we're being judgmental. If we're uh, looking at others and saying, hey, because you don't agree with me, that means you're unintelligent. Because you don't agree with me, that means you're ungodly. Because you don't agree with me and my perspectives, or because you're not going to vote for the candidate that I want to vote for, that means that you aren't a child of God. That means that you're a less of value or you're being disobedient to who God is calling you to be, right? And so that is not how God calls us to live. Even when somebody is wrong, even when somebody is wrong, even when somebody isn't doing the things that God wants them to do, God calls us to be gracious. He calls us to be merciful. He calls us to bless others. And that's what Christ did. The people who Christ went after the most, the people who Christ condemned the most, were the ones who thought they were right all the time were the religious elite 
who thought that they had the perspective of God, who thought that they spoke on behalf of God. Those were the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Those are the ones who God condemned. And so at Bucksmont, we don't want to be a people that reflects or, or is like the Pharisees. We want to be a people like Christ. And so to do that, we're, we're reflecting on the Psalms. We're reflecting on God's character and his majesty and his love for us and his love for others. So we're going to first look at Psalm 93. You could open up a Bible app. Uh, if you have a paper Bible in front of you, I uh, love the paper. Uh, turn to Psalm 93, look it up on your computer, or uh, don't use your um, app. And so what, what I'm going to do this morning, uh, at Bucksmont, I'm reading some Psalms, and then we're having different people pray. But here on this uh, message, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read a Psalm, then pray. Uh, read a psalm, then pray. Read a psalm and, and pray. Just as a way to renew our hearts and hear the word of God. Hear the scripture and, and, and what it says about God and who he is. All right, so Psalm 93. The Lord reigns. He is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed. He has put on strength as his belt. Yes, the world is established. It shall never be moved. Your throne is established from of old. You are from everlasting. The floods have lifted up, O oh Lord. The floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lift up their roaring. Mightier than the number, mightier than the thunders of many waters, mightier than the waves of the sea, the Lord on high is mighty. Your decrees are very trustworthy. Holiness befits your house, O Lord, forevermore. God's decrees are trustworthy. His holiness befits his house. His holiness befits his house. So at Bucksmont, we want to be a place where his holiness is present. So in this first prayer, I'm going to pray for our church, for Bucksmont Baptist Church. Oh, Heavenly Father, just thank you so much for uh, the people of Bucksmont, oh Lord. Help us to be a people of holiness. Help us to be a people of righteousness. Help us to move and do the things you call us to do in any and every circumstance, oh Lord. We want to be aligned with your will. We want to be aligned with your mind. We want to be a people in unity that moves forward and just honors and glorifies you in all things. We want to be your hands and your feet in our community. Help us to speak truth and love. Help us to uh, speak against injustice, speak against uh, things that are ungodly, and just speak for uh, the things you desire us, oh Lord. So we just thank you, oh God, for being a God that cares about us, a God that loves us in the midst of every issue and every problem we're going through, that loves us even when things are sticky and not well. You love us and you care for us. In Christ's name I pray, amen. So next we're going to read Psalm 29. And in Psalm 29, we're going to see that the God, that God is powerful. God is sovereign. God is in control. We're going to see the love of God also for his people and his desire us to be like him collectively. So let's read Psalm 29. Flip over there in your Bibles uh, uh, or go over um, to Psalm 29 in your apps. And uh, I'm going to be reading from the English Standard Version. It says, ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength, ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name, worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness, the voice of the Lord is over the waters, the glory of the God of glory thunders, the Lord over many waters, 
The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon to skip like a calf and Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the deer give birth and strips the forest bare. And in his temple all cry glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forever. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. Hmm. Powerful psalm. It's a powerful psalm. And in that, we see that God is over all things good and bad, right? It says, verse 10, the Lord sits enthroned over the flood, over judgment, over despair, over issue. The Lord is enthroned and he is over, right? It says, the Lord sits enthroned as king forever, regardless of the circumstance, regardless of the issue, God is enthroned. And then it says, may the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. So now I'm going to pray for all Christians across America, just that we can have the strength of God. He gives us strength that we can, we can take and harness and use his strength and that we could have peace in the midst of all circumstances. Let me pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, you are enthroned over all forevermore and for all time. Help us to honor and glorify you, O oh Lord. Help us to accept your peace. Help us to just have the peace of Christ in our lives at all times and all seasons. Help us to honor and glorify you. Please forgive us for the mistakes and divisions we have as churches for just how many splits that we've had. Help us to work together in unity for your glory and your kingdom across this country and in our individual communities. Let us be a church and a people that just, that just glorify you. Where people can see the church and see you. People can come to church and feel you and that people will look at Christians and churches throughout this country and know there's something different and know that they need to be a part of it. They need your grace, your mercy, your peace and your glory in their life. In Jesus name I pray, amen. You know, there's just been so many divisions in churches and in our country. And it's so important to recognize that God is a God of reconciliation. God is a, is a God of transformation. God is a God of glory, right? We're not going to be able to um, be in unity with non-Christians on a lot of issues. But within the church, within across denominations, we need to, to, to focus on God. We need to focus on scripture, on what the Bible teaches us, what the Bible guides us to do. We need to be about scripture and use that as a place to come together and further his kingdom, to come together and honor and glorify him. Too often, churches... Bible-believing Christians have um, come into conflict over tertiary issues, uh, you know, Calvinism, um, uh, a predestination, free will, uh, uh, eschatology, 
um, you know, even ecclesiology, just the belief about end times, belief about structures in church has caused division and division and, and people aren't working together, even within denominations, let alone across denominations. So we need to come together and we need to be about God and his kingdom, not our individual preferences. Turn over to Psalm 47. Let's read Psalm 47. Again, English Standard Version. And it says, Clap your hands, all peoples. Shout to God with loud songs of joy. For the Lord, the Most High, is to be feared. A great king over all the earth. He subdued peoples under us and his nations under our feet and nations under our feet. He chose our heritage for us, the pride of Jacob, whom he loves. Salah. God has gone up with a shout. The Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises to our king. Sing praises. For God is the king of all the earth. Sing praises with a psalm. God reigns over the nations. God sits on his holy throne. The princes of the peoples gather as the people of the God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong to God. He is highly exalted. God is over everything. This psalm tells us that God reigns over the nations, right? Verse 8, God reigns over the nations. God sits on his holy throne. God is sovereign. Everything, at every moment throughout history, God is over, right? God is over. Sin and bad things happen in this broken world. But God is in control. God is over all. And this scripture, this psalm tells us. So now I'm going to pray for our country. I'm going to pray for the United States. Oh, Heavenly Father, we just thank you, O oh Lord, um, for the formation of this country and the freedoms that so many have enjoyed throughout this country's history. But even in the midst of those freedoms, oh Lord, there have been people who have been oppressed. There have been people who have been mistreated. There have been abuses and issues, oh Lord. We just pray, oh Lord, that we could be a nation of truth. We could be a nation of righteousness, oh Lord. We could be a nation that follows after you wholeheartedly and that we could truly stand against sin, against ungodliness, that the fibers within us that are corrupt will go away, oh Lord, will dissipate. And that together as a nation, we can have revival, oh Lord, true revival, where our hearts and our minds and our actions are aligned with you as a country, where we can do what is right in your eyes, oh Lord. I'm not praying for a theocracy. I'm just praying that your presence, your spirit will just, um, will just move people to be more like you. And we could be image bearers of who you are as a country. We could honor and glorify you throughout the world as a nation in the right way with the right motives and the right heart, O oh Lord. So I just pray that we as Christians can move this country the way you want us to move, that we will share the gospel, that your, your ways will just grow and permeate so greatly that, that we will not just be a Christian na nation in word, but also indeed. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. We're going to jump over to Psalm 121 now.
Um, this is our final psalm for today. Just for encouragement, you know, uh, a lot of times in America, I'm guilty of this. Uh, I know a lot of people are guilty of this too, friends and family members. We think we can do it all. We think because God has given us resources, sometimes people don't even recognize that God has given them resources. But we think because we have stuff, we have accessibility. We can order things on Amazon. We can stock up on goods and supplies. We have computers and, and lights and heat and all these things. We think that our strength comes from what we have, what, what, what we physically have, what we can physically do. But all that, all that is not true strength. All that does not give us true security. Only the Lord does that. Only the Lord. Psalm 121, I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? Who, my help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Let me read that again. Verses 7 and 8. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Oh, Heavenly Father, help us to just remember where our strength truly comes from. Help us to just depend on you in all things. In the midst of anything, whether candidates win or lose, whether any issue befalls upon us, you are God and you are in control. And we praise you and we thank you. You know, even though we are in a world of uncertainty, God is always with us. God always cares for us, no matter the difficulties or the struggles we face. God is with us and he loves us. We just have to turn to Christ, accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior for that eternal peace and that eternal security. If you haven't done that, do so today. Accept Jesus Christ as the, your Lord and Savior. He is the giver of life, the keeper of all. These Psalms were written by the nation of Israel. They're written by God's people in the Old Testament, the nation of Israel. When Christ came, he, he opened the doors. He made himself available. He made reconciliation with him available through his blood on the cross. Be reconciled with God. Be reconciled with Christ. Give your life to Christ today. Give your life. You know, as Numbers 6, 24 through 26 says, May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. I pray for God's peace and blessing upon you. If there's anything we could do for you at Bucksmont Baptist Church, please reach out to, to us. We just desire to be a community, to be a church that helps people grow in their faith, grow in their love for God, and also um, grow in getting to know God. So please reach out to us if there's anything we could do for you or anything we could pray for you about.